During the last lecture, we have seen applications of finite element method to structural dynamics. Now, let's see how to develop lumped mass matrix and consistent mass matrix for various types of elements. Let's consider first a bar element. So, two noded bar element with degree of freedom u per node. So, this we know very well. Degree of freedom is u per node. So, total degree of freedom is 2, that is u1 and u2. And the displacement function at any point within the element can be assumed by using polynomial function, by using safe functions n1 u1 plus n2 u2. And these safe functions are calculated by using language and interpolation formula. So n1 is equal to say x minus x1. So let's consider degrees of freedom x1 and x2. It's okay divided by x minus x2 divided by x1 minus x2. Substituting the coordinates x minus x2 is L divided by x1 is 0 minus x2 is L. So this is equal to x minus L divided by minus L. Or we can write down this as 1 minus x by L. This is n one set function. Then n2 we can calculate as x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1 and this is equal to x minus 0 divided by x2 that is L minus 0. So this comes out to be x by L. So we have already seen earlier how to find out these safe functions for 1D element. So the displacement function now becomes u equal to so this is n1 is 1 minus x by L u1 plus n2 is x by L u2. So in matrix form we, we can write down this as 1 minus x by L x by L and then this is u1 u2 and in symbolic form u equal to the safe function matrix into the nodal displacements delta. So our aim is to find out safe functions from which we can develop the consistent mass matrix. So the safe function here, the safe function matrix is equal to, so this is 1 minus x by L and L2 is x by L. So this is the safe function matrix. Now how to calculate the consistent mass matrix? So consistent mass matrix is equal to integration 0 to L, N transpose into rho, actually this is our entire value we have to calculate, into safe function matrix into dv or we can write down dx dy dz but integration dy dz is the cross-sectional area so this we can write down rho we can take outside the cross-sectional area then integration 0 to l then the safe function transpose of safe function this is 1 minus x by l this is x by L, then this is 1 minus x by L, x by L into dx. Now we have to find out the integration or we have to simplify this expression. So this is equal to rho into A, integration 0 to L, then 1, so multiplication, so we will get 
1 minus x by L bracket square then x by L 1 minus x by L. Then second row, this is x by L, 1 minus x by L, and this is x power by L divided bracket square, dx. Now integrating this, so let's find out to integrate, integration of this. So the integration of this bracket is to be calculated after squaring. So this integration x, integration of 1, and minus 2x by L. So minus 2x square upon 2L plus x square L square. Integration is plus x cube upon 3L square. Then this term here, integration is x square upon 2L minus x square x cube divided by 3L square. And here again same expression you will get x square upon 2L minus x cube by 3L square. And here x cube upon 3L square. From 0 to L. Now upper limit minus lower limit. After integration, we can do upper limit minus lower limit. And doing this, you will get a rho and taking constant outside. So this is 2, here we will get 1 and 1, 2. So this is the consistent mass matrix. So this mass matrix is called consistent mass matrix. Now finding out lumped mass matrix is very easy. In case of lumped mass matrix, simply we have to lump the masses equally among two nodes lump mass matrix. So for lump mass matrix, directly it is a always diagonal matrix and total mass is rho AL. So therefore directly we will get rho AL by 2 and this is 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is a diagonal matrix and this is called lump mass matrix which can be directly calculated by lumping the mass equally among two nodes. So for bar element we have calculated the consistent mass matrix as well as the lump mass matrix. So this is consistent mass matrix and this is lump mass matrix. Similarly now we can calculate the mass matrix for truss element. consider a truss element so we know that in case of truss element the degree of freedom is 2 per node that is u and v translations horizontal and vertical translations then say that means suppose this is a Truss element, then we know this is u1, this is v1, u2, v2. So node 1, node 2. And the properties are cross section area A and length L. Properties of the element A is the cross section area, L is the length. Now here, See, when we consider 
u equal to x n1 u1 plus n2 u2 and v equal to n1 v1 plus n2 v2. So the displacement functions can be assumed in both the directions. So this is nothing but in matrix form this is u v equal to this is n1 0 and 2 0 similarly 0 and 1 0 and 2 and here it is u1 v1 u2 v2 so this we can write down as this is u is equal to safe function into the displacements nodal displacements now this, what is this safe function now? So here n1 is equal to 1 minus x by l and l2 equal to x by l. So therefore this n1 n safe function n becomes this matrix 1 minus x by l 0 then x by l 0. This is 0 1 minus x by l, 0 and x by l. Now first we calculate the consistent mass matrix which is given by m equal to integration. Now here we can take area, cross-sectional area and density outside. So integration 0 to l and this is m transpose n dx. Now we can substitute this row into a integration 0 to l transpose of this matrix. So this is 1 minus x by l and 0 and 0 1 minus x upon l then x by l 0 and this is 0 x by l multiplied by same this matrix 1 minus x by l 0 x upon l 0 and this is 0 1 minus x by l 0 x by l dx now again here after multiplication and integration that you can do and what you will get rho after taking constant terms outside rho a l by 6 and the matrix will be 2 0 1 0 0 then this is 2 0 1 and this is 2 1, 0, 2, 0, then uh, 0, 1, 0, 2. So this is the consistent mass matrix for truss element. Again, the lumped mass matrix, lumped mass matrix, so in a similar way, we can find out the lumped mass matrix just by the total mass is lumped equally among the two nodes. And this is given by m equal to rho a l by 2. And this is a diagonal matrix. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is a lump of mass matrix for a truss element. So that means we can find out the consistent and lump of mass matrix for various element by using this procedure. Now let's consider one more element.
of beam element. Now for beam element again, degree of freedom is 2 per node. Degree of freedom equal to 2 per node. But here the degree of freedom considered is V and theta. So let's consider a beam element. So here say node 1 and node 2. Now the vertical translation that is in the direction of shear force we have to consider say V1 and rotation theta 1 in the direction of bending moment. Because for beam element the unknown forces at the nodes are shear forces and bending moments and corresponding displacements are vertical translation and rotation that is V1 theta 1 at node 1 and V2 theta 2 at node 2. So we have to consider this again the expression for this you know that V is equal to, because theta is a dependent quantity, hence only we have to assume the displacement function in V, and this is equal to N1 V1 plus N2 theta1 plus N3 V2 plus N4 theta2. It means if we calculate, we write down this in matrix form, and this is N1, N2, N3, N4. And the displacements are V1 theta1, V2 theta2. So this can be written as equal to the safe function matrix into the displacements. Now, in case of beam functions, you must know the various, the safe functions and one. This we can derive no doubt, but I am giving directly the safe functions for beam element. So, we have derived this safe functions for beam element earlier. Now, let us take down this directly. N1 is 1 minus 3x square divided by L square, then plus 2 x cube divided by L cube, this is N1, then N2 is equal to x minus 2x square upon L plus x cube by L square, then N3 say function is 3x square by L square, then minus 2x cube upon L cube and N4 N4 minus X square by L plus X cube by L square. So these are the safe functions for beam element. These safe functions we have derived earlier in 1D element in the topic of finite element when we learn one dimensional element. Now, as usual, the consistent mass matrix is given by M is equal to integration. Again, we can take a row and cross section area as a common 0 to L, and this is. N transpose N into dx. So substituting this and integrating, so this vertically we can take first. So this is 1 minus 3 x square by L square plus 2 x cube by L cube. Then this is x minus 2 x square by L plus x cube by L square. This is 3 x square upon L square minus 2 x cube by L cube. And finally, 
minus x square by L plus x cube by L square. Then again you write down this in a row this way and dx. So this and one and two and three and four. Same shape functions we have to write down here. Then after multiplication and integration, what we add a consistent or distributed mass matrix as rho A L by 420. You have to do these calculations. You solve this completely, multiplication, integration, upper limit minus lower limit, and you will get this is 156 and 22 L, 54 minus 13 L, and 22 L, 4 L square, 13 L, minus 3 L square. Then 54 and 13 L, 156 minus 22 L. And this is minus 13 L, minus 3 L square, minus 22 L, and 4 L square. So this is the consistent mass matrix for beam element. 4 by 4 matrix. Then lumped mass matrix. It's a diagonal mass matrix. Again, this is 2 noded. So M is equal to rho A L by 2. This is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So finding out lump mass matrix is very easy. Directly we can write down the lump mass matrix. But calculating consistent mass matrix is quite difficult. But by using consistent mass matrix, we will get more accurate results as compared to the lump mass matrix. But from simplicity point of view, the lump mass matrix can be used to solve the problems. So this is about how to develop the lump mass matrix and the consistent mass matrix for various types of element. And I just wanted to show you the time history analysis, the how the overall equation of motions are written for time history analysis and the meaning of various terms used in that equation. So the dynamic equation of motion, so let's consider time history analysis. Now the dynamic equation of motion is given by, this you know very well, this is m x double dot plus c, this is a vector, c x dot plus k matrix k into x is equal to the external force vector that is f of t. So this is f of t because it external forces varies with the time and hence the f of t, the symbol t is used. Here what is this? This is mass matrix. Then this is accelerations. acceleration vector then C is damping coefficient matrix
unit x dot is velocity vector k is a stiffness matrix and x these are the nodal displacement vector and this f of t is external nodal forces nodal forces vary with time so this is the general equation of motion used in dynamic analysis now here this mass matrix is calculated by using this or entire value just now we have seen this is transpose of safe function rho into safe function d similarly this uh, damping coefficient matrix c is worked out so this is v and this is given by n transpose then mu coefficient into n t v and the k matrix this is b transpose b b over entire value we have to integrate over entire value so using these formulas we can find out consistent mass matrix then damping coefficient matrix and element stiffness matrix and if you want to find out the frequencies then we have to solve eigen value problems so for frequencies we know omega square m into x my plus k if it is a free vibration problem then n to x is equal to 0 so that means this gives us minus omega square m plus k into displacement vector x equal to 0 at x is not equal to 0 this is not equal to 0 therefore minus omega square m plus k this must be equal to 0 so solving this equation or this is a eigen value problem we can find out the frequencies omega so this omega can be calculated for various types of problems in structural dynamics so what we have seen that how to find out consistent mass matrix lumped mass matrix and to how to find out the frequencies by using finite element to solve the structural dynamics problem so this much portion is sufficient as per our syllabus so let's stop here